I'm not high volume by any stretch. I'm, I'm tens of orders, hundreds of orders a week. Um, so thousands a year. Yeah, but we maybe see three clients at a time in those, those yeah, exactly. last half a year. So I'm, I'm not Amazon by any stretch though. Just, like I, I am that like step up from where you're at, that like next category of how many clients do you see at a time? Um, and from there, the thing that I've done is I've created a bunch of very unique products, which is the inventor aspect. Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. This is a place for accomplished professionals to talk about their life and their work in an informal and hopefully an insightful way. If you like what you see, hit subscribe below. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Constantine Grinius. Uh, Constantine is the president of Magnet Baron, the Magnet Baron himself, if you will. Um, it's a Warhammer 40K um, company that makes magnetic float stands. Pretty cool stuff uh, for the hobby sector. Constantine, also a bit of a serial entrepreneur. Constantine, welcome to the pod. Well, thank you, Spencer. Cool. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. So, um, did I do the Magnet Baron justice? I feel like I, uh, I don't understand what you do enough. It'd be interesting to hear about it from your point of view. It's a weird one in a lot of ways. So the tagline is your DIY super magnetic home. Nice. Uh, and, and it's primarily that for tabletop gamers. So if you had some sort of tabletop miniature, you wanted to swap out weapons on for uh, different rules in game, then there's a, probably a specialty kit for that. Cool. Uh, lots of magnets for different parts. Lots of, lots of different magnetic flight stands. We have the ball and socket posable ones. You can make it look like your toys are swooping. Nice. Um, some some ferromagnetic movement trays. If you insist on playing with too many toys on the table and you're very <laughs> slow about it, uh, it's it is a DIY magnetic hobby marketplace uh, as much as uh, anything else. There's, there's the drill bits, the super glue, everything that you might need. If if you pick up a magnet, there's a chance I have. Like if, if you need a magnet, I probably have the tools you need and the magnets you need. Nice. And just a plug, that's magnetbaron.com, I believe. Mm -hmm. Or is it themagnetbaron.com? I own both. Nice. They both go to the same one. Perfect. <laughs> Whatever you remember. And if you spell it B-A-R-R -R or B-A-R, I have both. The, the, the actual website is themagnetbaron.com with one R and Baron. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I try to do that too with SKA stuff. Just get as many domains that redirect as possible to make it easy. And then I feel like this, the other one is like payment uh, acceptance. So like, you know, don't make it difficult for people to pay you, right? So we take PayPal, ACH, check, credit card. Um, I, I just want to bail on PayPal so hard though. I don't They're like raising the rates. Did they actually? Yeah. What do they ask? So not what were they at before? Uh, they were two, I want to say they're 2.8. Now they're 2.99. And then some of the rates went up to 3.49. I like, don't remember if that's me or not. Um, the other thing that that's kind of annoying that they raised is the, the per transaction fee used to be 30 cents and it's 49, which isn't relevant until you go through thousands of transactions a year. Oh, geez. At which, yeah, that, that little 19 cent increase could cost me a couple th a thousand, a couple thousand dollars this year, depending on how many people pay with PayPal. That sucks. Yeah, it's so don't pay with PayPal. <laughs> well, and, and we've actually started taking, I mean, a, a fee for credit card processes as well. Like originally it was like, we just want to make this convenient for everybody. You know, we'll eat the, the difference or whatever. And then it's like, no, I don't want to get hit with 3% every time you pay, you know, a $20,000 invoice with a credit card. <laughs> <That's>, <sighs> yeah, killing it's, me. Um, a bunch of my suppliers this year, actually, I, I started getting, uh, I started switched over to ACH. I got a, a bank that does free wires and ACHs, which is awesome. Uh, they, uh, I, I used that and went to all my suppliers and said, I'll pay you by ACH or wire. Nice. What will you give me in exchange? And one of them went 8%. I go, wow. Holy crap. Yes. So how are they, yes. what, what merchant services are they using or they have to pay 8%? Uh, I think they're Chinese and I think they get hit with five plus percent. Oh, so it's not just, um, it's not just the, uh, the credit card processing fee. It's also like an, a, a tariff basically. It sounds like PayPal charges. Uh, if you're in China, they charge you 5%. Oh fuck. So it is the pay. That's, that's bad. 
Yes. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, how many chargebacks does PayPal really have against the Chinese from U.S. consumers? That's a good point. So they're, they're sort of protecting against that, I guess. I, it's been there for years. So it's how I'm not sure where the other 3% came from with him, but uh, I don't know. It, he's a funny one. It took him, I was like, what's your payment info? And like four weeks later, he responded. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we have, uh, there's a vendor I'm working with that's like that. It's um, the ones we use for like our shipping services. And um, it's, I always have to chase them down to figure out like how much money we owe them and like get them paid. And it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to pay you and invoice our clients the money, you know, for the appropriate products where we shipped it. I think I didn't even charge one client for like, it was like an overnight shipping for like a hundred bucks. I'm just like, eh, you know, it's been too long before the shipping merchant actually told me what it cost. So. <sighs> I, so I actually have, a, I keep joking and I, I probably will never do it because it's, it, this just needs to be, this is my life meme. I need to write a book about all the people who turned down my money after working for me. Wait, what? And yes. So I had uh, the, the, one of the worst of them, um, freshman, sophomore engineering student at USC. Uh, we were working on steel glass, uh, strengthening restaurant glassware. Oh, cool. I uh, could take a, a cup and drop it off a second story building. That's awesome. Uh, turns out waiters and waitresses can break what pavement can't. <laughs> but did you did you catch any of it on film to see like how they did it? We uh, I I know what the process is. Like I, I I worked on it a little bit. I worked on adapting it for our use. What more sometimes. when I went rather than how it's manufactured is how they managed to break it because that seems. Oh, I heard some of them were pretty it, they like drop it and it goes spinning out of their hand lip first into a the, the corner of a metal table oh at full speed yeah as point like load. running I'll up to the table that'll, so that'll not you. only did they shatter a glass they splattered a full cup of shirley temple all over a customer. <laughs> <laughs> that's i mean every so, any glass would break when you did that though i would think like yeah i mean that's, yeah. that's there's no getting around that yeah, exactly. Three times. It's no, 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 it just doesn't work. But uh, so the when I was doing that business, we were working on a, uh, a treatment cage. So something you could expose this, this, uh, these glasses to the different chemicals. And we wanted a modular one for different sizes. So I got a, a freshman sophomore engineer uh, at USC to, uh, to work on it. And I go, okay, cool. How much? He goes, you know, 400 bucks or something. I'm like, awesome. Perfect. And then it's like, I don't need this to be perfect. I just need this to be functional enough to, to talk to investors as a prototype. I need to start so I can talk to a real engineer with, with a lot more experience who costs a lot more money. Sure. So uh, I, I got him to do the work, took a couple of weeks, fine. Um, he sent it over to me. It was great. He even animated it so you could see how it moved. It was modular and could accept different size of cups. It was, it was actually a really cool piece That's of, awesome. uh, of cageware, basically. Nice. Um, probably pretty cheap to make, you know, a few hundred, a few thousand dollars at most. Uh, really, really nifty piece of, uh, of tech for what we needed. Then I go, all right, well, thanks. How can I pay you? No response. Seriously? Yeah. I, like disappeared. Hey, do you have Venmo? How about PayPal? Do you want cash? You just kept reaching out, like asking, and he, he just never got back to you. <laughs> so the better part is this was a- Did you try calling the guy? this was a referral from a buddy and my buddy before I even started goes, don't screw him out of the money or I'll take like, I'll, I'll beat you. Like he, he just like give his, gives me the like, don't you dare. Like, <laughs> right. Like don't, don't mess around with this kid. I like him. Yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't lie. So then I show him the message. I go, he goes, did you pay him? I go, no, but before you throw a punch, I want you to read this text message thread. And he reads it. It goes, uh, uh, I'm like, do you want to message him? Ask. Like, I, it's, he goes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just $400 this, this freshman in college just gave up. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I mean, that's a lot of money for someone at that age, too, you know? That's just, yeah, there's so much of that. There's so much just, it's, it, most of the time it's 20 bucks here. That's like bucks beer here. for two parties for all your friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, it's, it was so frustrating because I'm sitting there as, as the other party going like, I feel bad for not paying him, but I, I don't know where he lives. I can't hunt him down. And this other guy Our tried to reach him too and he couldn't get a hold of him either. Our mutual friend couldn't find him or couldn't get, get him to give me a contact info. And I'm just like, I, Maybe I he just like died him. the moment he finished it. You know. I think he had some family stuff going on. But yeah. at, at the same time, I'm like, I, I never, ever, ever, I, it's been 
seven years, six years. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like you got you got twelve to eighteen months generally to message me for something like that. It's if it's like twenty thousand dollars, maybe twenty four. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I mean, at a certain point, it kind of gets ridiculous. There's a lawyer that did some work for for us. Um, I want to say like three years ago, there was a, a bit of a snafu where I uh, hired an engineer to work on a project, uh, prepaid them twelve thousand dollars. And um, they non-delivered, so they, they basically faked all their demonstrations, and then they delivered like software that didn't work. They're doing the stuff it was supposed to. And when we looked inside of it, it was it was the manufacturer of a sensor software that had been like repurposed and sort of dressed up, you know, and, and polished to look like it wasn't. But I mean, when you got in, like they didn't even change like example file names and stuff, so it was very obvious. And so. Um, because they kind of led us to believe it was being worked on, we had to spend like another 40 grand cleaning up the mess in order to meet our, you know, clients uh, deadline. And I just didn't sleep for a month is how that manifested. But anyway, that, that's why I got a lawyer involved <laughs> I was trying to recover that money. And um, the lawyer put in a bunch of time. This was in Tennessee and I'm, you know, like a Northern Jew boy, you know, and so I'm pretty sure I would do horrible in a Southern court. But I, you know, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to get fucked. So I um, hired like the guy with the thickest Southern accent I could find. Um, this is going to sound horrible, but I, I jokingly to a couple of friends referred to him as Foghorn Leghorn. And um, he, he was a nice guy, um, but uh, I think a little bit senile. Like, I, I think he was starting to lose it. Like he might have been one of the original founders of this law firm, but like his mind was going. And so like. I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. Like maybe he realized he wasn't providing useful value. I still wanted to pay him for the time he put in though. And you know, the invoice was like, it was weird. Like he had a junior associate on these calls for a couple of them in addition to him. And I asked like how much, you know, each of them had racked up in terms of service. And the junior guy knew like to the penny, you know, like how much, you know, we owed the senior guy, I don't know, like 700, $1,200 call it, you know? And I'm like, all right, you know, like just thinking I'm going to pay the invoice and just not, not use them again, you know, um, you know, cause that's kind of my, my way I like to handle that sort of thing. And, um, I couldn't get this law firm to invoice me. Like I, I like called up the front desk. I, I was saying, Hey, I think we owe you money. Um, can you please invoice us? And they were like, well, we don't want to not invoice you, but then they, they still didn't. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a weird tenet of business like one, one of them is you know show up uh, you got to have customers but then you have to bill your customers and collect but imagine a law firm not billing you i mean that's like even like our general counselor and like account were like don't worry they'll find a way to bill you i'm like all right so i, I th okay. this this would have been three years ago I, I still have an llc open you know just for the sole purpose of handling you know that you know incident and uh still haven't come a knocking it's it's really weird it's really weird the amount of people who don't bill for services yeah i have a feeling with that one they at least they probably just felt bad because i mean that the guy was sort of losing his marbles yeah they, they didn't you know they didn't want to charge you for something that wasn't i mean that shouldn't have been billed i think that's what it was but they never admitted it I mean, you know Absolutely. how these lawyers are. Like, I, I probably to say so would have been seen as a weakness or, you know, admission of fault or. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it, well, it'd be malpractice, wouldn't it? Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know enough about, you know, how it they works just, to, to know what they, that looks like for a legal firm. They just opted to not charge you and, and, and let that not be a malpractice suit for them. Yeah, no, okay. I, I, evidently. Yeah. That's. Yeah, no, that's that's probably the best way. I know I never saw what this guy looked like, but like partway through the uh, the interaction, you had to have quadruple bypass surgery. <laughs> cool. So I would imagine probably a large dude. Poor guy. Yeah, and he's a, he, like I said, nice nice guy. Um, definitely funny. I uh, I referred to myself at one point in interactions as a Yankee son of a bitch, and he I got a giggle out of him. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I actually lived in Nashville for a year, so I know nice. the kind of people you're talking about. I love Nashville. It's fucking great. We it's it was cool. If I bought a house then, I think it would have gone up uh 
I'm, one of my buddies sold his house out in Mount Juliet, let's say half an hour, 45 minutes from downtown, from, from Broadway, from Nissan Stadium, yep. the, the center of the town. Um, he sold, I think, 1,500 square feet, $145,000. Fuck, what did he pay? Uh, no, that I probably like 100. But so that, that was uh, four years ago, three years ago. Uh, I think his house is four or 450. Now. Yeah, dude, this market right now is like goddamn insane. But I mean, forty percent gain ain't bad though. It sounds like he still did all right. Oh well, and here's the thing: he bought another house, so he's got a bigger house now. Nice. That, that's probably more expensive, closer to town. So his house is probably worth five or six hundred. So he did fine. Yeah, that sounds like it. He, and he that forty that he made on the first one probably helped with the new one. So. Yeah. Well, and, and it's uh, the they they both made money. D dink, no no kids, double income, no kids. So dink. they're doing fine. <laughs> I like Almost, that. Uh, but uh, so we were just looking today and we were watching houses over in, in Montgomery, Maryland, Montgomery County, Maryland, just outside yeah. of DC um, and Fairfax area. We're, we're just, you know, shopping around the areas and we were watching houses go down by 20 to $50,000 oh. in the last two days. Yeah. Two to four days. Yeah. So this bubble's finally burst in. Uh, so I think we've either hit the plateau right now or about a week ago. Um, and once that velocity is gone, that is gone. Like, what either these people were overlisting um or they uh the bubble has actually burst and i'll be able to answer that question in about one to three weeks so when everyone else is listening to this you will know whether or not this was a burst or a plateau yeah so about about a two-month lag on these episodes <laughs> okay yeah okay so you'll all in uh out in september october you will know the deflationary crash, the housing crash. You will you will tell me all of those things. What's a, what's a good email address to send hate mail to? Ours, ours is podcast at SKA dot solutions. Uh, oh, let's go with WTF mate one three three seven at <laughs> yahoo dot com. <laughs> WTF mate one three three seven at yahoo dot com. Yes, send so all know. financial hate mail uh, to Constantine. <laughs> WTF. Yep. Blame me for the financial crash in, in two months. Just, just send a thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know. I would say We're damn Greek. Jews, but that's me. You're Greek. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We're not sure. far off. I mean, we're pretty similar. Uh, just as humans <laughs> in general, I feel like you and I are very similar. Oh, we we but have yeah, the same yeah. kind of mother. Correct. Yeah. And if you want to stereotype our nationalities, for sure, we both like drinking. Um, <laughs> what are you it's, drinking, by the drink way? Drink a uh, This is a strawberry Angry Orchard. Nice. I had an Angry Orchard in a while. Mine is a um, Basil Hayden uh, bourbon, which is quite mm. good. Been on this awesome. uh, stupid ketogenic diet I told you about that I probably have talked about in too many episodes. Where, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I had a Manhattan last night, like really indulged. I was recording another one. And um, yeah, I just I could just feel the pounds coming back on. <laughs> so. I thought about getting metho Methoxa. Uh, I decided that uh, it was it's 90 plus outside right now in the evening. I really, really wanted something cold and sweet. So we did this instead. No, nice. what, what was the other alternative? You said Methoxa? Metoxa. Metoxa. What is that? Greek brandy. Oh, I don't think I've had that yet. Uh, if you want as old as you can get it, very old. Uh, it's they. If you can find the hand painted bottles uh, in the liquor store, those are like I think they're four star grand fine. Is really what you want. More stars the better, depending on your taste. But uh, you need to remind me about this after this podcast because <laughs> I'm going to buy it on the way home. It. it it can burn. It's great. It's uh, it's the we'll call it the Greek, uh, celebration liquor. It's weddings and funerals. So is it like a, like a Greek grappa a little bit? Greek what? Like like uh, you know the Italians have grappa, which is like made from like uh, think so. I think I probably have this wrong, but I I think it's like the grape skins like fermented and then distilled. Probably, probably. It's fucking gross. Like it it tastes That's, like um. This is sweet. A solvent. <laughs> so. This okay. So think it, it's super super boozy. Probably like forty percent, forty five percent, but nice. it's also sweet. That's all. I normally don't take notes during this because I try not to get distracted. But I actually kind of want to remember to grab this. <laughs> they usually have like one choice in the liquor store. 
if you've got a BevMo, sometimes they have more. Nice. Yeah, I, um, if I can find a pen, I'll write this down. If I can't, I, uh, I'm gonna go back and do my job. Record this episode, okay. All right, and then what were the brands you said were good? It's it. You'll look at. It's not a brand. You'll just see it's Grand Fine. Is what you're after. Uh, I think it's normally like forty or fifty dollars a bottle. That ain't bad. Uh, it's you'll see, the more stars the better. You want four plus stars. How many stars can it have maximum? I think seven. Okay, cool. I think that bottle might be like ninety dollars though. Makes sense. Also, good luck finding it. That's the other problem. I've paid more than that for scotch, but... Well, yeah. it's. I think most of the methoxide is actually imported from Greece, too. So That's cool. That's, that's the other issue. The sweet thing concerns me a little bit, because I'm like worried it'll fuck up my diet. But um, right. trying a new booze Safe kind time. of outweighs my concern. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other cool thing is like i mean if i don't drink it all the time because it's too sweet that means it gets to sit on the shelf for a few years and, and just be around for other people so exactly there you go metox is a fun one yeah i've noticed like whiskey i just seem to be going through like it's water these days i think because when i record these podcasts i usually have a glass of whiskey and so basil That's hayden funny. gets drunk a lot um centauri toki is a japanese whiskey i've been drinking a lot on the podcast um People will bring in bottles. So somebody brought in um, a high, was it high noon or high west distillery? It was like really pretty good. And then there was another one that I really liked that was called Lead Slingers. Uh, it's like a veteran owned company where it's it's a weird branding. Like they're like into like the Second Amendment and also whiskey, <laughs> which is bizarre to to see. But it was like um, yeah, the guy was like a like a marine for thirteen years. He brought in this bottle. And he was like, I just wanted to bring you something from my world. And I'm like, thanks, buddy. <laughs> and it was like really good whiskey. Like, I'm trying to find it now because like, you know, as tacky as the branding sounds, it actually tasted good. So appreciate it. Good stuff. I got to I gotta do a very fun branding exercise very shortly. Uh, so Magnet Baron actually is uh, both me and a character, which is me in a custom vest, bow tie, pocket watch, and a top hat. <laughs> uh, so... I have a green screen, I have a fancy mic, and uh, we are going to be filming YouTube ads of me pitching magnets to uh, to, to gamers on YouTube. <laughs> Do you have a director for that, or is it just going to be you trying to, like, get in character? Uh, her name is Ashley, and nice. she is, uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, uh, she has a ring for me, so... This is the very same Ashley that you're about to marry. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one. Cool. So... No, it's it's this is this is me just I, I'm doing pre roll ad for six seconds. You can't skip it, sorry. And you don't need to skip it, you're welcome. Magnetize your minis, flight stands, custom kits, and all the hobby supplies you'll need from the magnetbaron.com. <laughs> That's almost like nineties cheesy. Like I, I feel like that like I, I had a an uncle that owned like a mattress store and he would make these fucking cheesy ass commercials for TV and it was fucking hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly fun. it. And it's, it's six seconds. It's not going to be a lot. Uh, I had somebody make a podcast ad for me a couple years ago, which that we could insert here. Um, it's it, the, the way it starts off is the train whistle and you just hear a, a couple of walls smashing <laughs> and I go it's like they're talking like oh blah blah how am I supposed to what am I supposed to do I can't decide what I want to do woo, woo. it's the magnet baron <laughs> <laughs> life after the cover save if you like tabletop gaming those guys are great <laughs> Robo Ed and Blake those guys are, are phenomenal podcast writers as well uh, or, or uh, podcast ad writers as well so that's uh, awesome. They do a great job. Like they are, they're awesome at, at that. Like that was, that was a great ad. So that's, that's something else I joked about wanting to do, but in six, six seconds, I think it's much more of a, uh, get the con get the product out there and just show up and be the person in the picture and then get out of the way. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the product. Like it, six seconds is not a lot of time. That's, that's no, like, but like any longer than that. And people wouldn't use YouTube. I feel like no, they would skip the ad. Yeah. That's that's what you do. It's it's a pre-roll ad. You you hit that pre-roll number and you say bye. 
Yeah, that like, makes oh, sense. I don't. There's. It just seems rude. I... <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. When I have the ads uh, that go over, I'm like, what am I doing? Listening to this dick talk about weight loss or you know like bodybuilding like, or how you can get rich selling shampoo to your friends and family until they stop talking to you or yeah <laughs> uh cop was it coffee eat zilla has been ripping all of those uh fake gurus new new uh new reruns it's been great i've been uh, i've been watching some coffee of stuff eats eat. zillow zilla zilla like, co- like godzilla I-, I feel like that's coffee meets bagel but like just tweaked a little like are they just trying to be know. like every ripoff name they can? <laughs> like, he's hilarious. He's he's been ripping these scammers new new rear ends for a while now, and uh, stumbled on him. And he's just been this. This is a shout out for you. So you have to you have to do a if we if we tag him and get his attention every time he gets a, a shout out from another uh, an, another content creator, he has to do a whole response video that's ten times the length. Oh, actually, as his shout out. That, that's his own like commitment to himself. So, but so. what about like? If the shout out can the shout out be considered a whole like two hour or whatever this ends up being podcast? Because how I, funny I, would that be, right? If he needed like twenty fucking hours of like, <laughs> I'll, I'll let him decide. I'll let him decide. Trying to if, figure if, that if, out. If you, hear this, if you hear this, just know I appreciate you ripping all these people new butts. Coffee eats and, Zillow. Uh, uh, you sound Zilla. pretty Zilla. Coffee eats Zilla. I am a cunt for getting that wrong. Coffee at Zilla, you sound hilarious. Um, I'm just going to run down the clock a little bit longer because I <laughs> really want to see a, uh, a response video. Um, let's get some shit talking going there, bud. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, get us some and subscribers. <laughs> also, Coffee at Zilla, if you want to know how to start an incredible magnet business, just just hit me up. I've got a, a course. It only costs $25 million just for you. It's a special price. Anytime somebody says special price just for you, I run for the hell. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I know, I know. I wanted to trigger him a little bit if he hears this. I wanted just, I want to, I want you to twitch, man. I, I just, I wanted, I want to see your eye twitch when you hear me say that. <laughs> somebody said that to me the other day, and I was like, oh. did they play with mean, this it, person? Like, it, they wanted to sell me. Um, what the what the fuck were they saying? It was it was it was marketing services. So they wanted to be like a. Uh, like a part-time CMO or whatever. And it's like, um, what the fuck? Well, they were, um, they were saying, you know, for like five to $10,000, they could come in and like retool our sales and marketing plan. I'm like, we already have a sales and marketing plan. And they're like, yeah, well, I'll make it better. I'm like, well, is there a bite-sized version of that? Maybe for like less money where we could get a taste of what you do, but not be in for five to 10 grand without even knowing you, you know? And like, like yeah, for like fifteen hundred, I'll come in for two hours and I'll write your, um, you know, like your elevator pitch. And like, so you charge seven hundred fifty dollars an hour. And they're like, "Don't think of it that way, buddy." And I'm like, "But I am." <laughs> so... <laughs> but I'm super experienced. Yeah, you know who else is super experienced? My buddy who runs, uh, his, whose dad runs a ranch, in uh, <laughs> just across the border in uh, in San Diego, and his jar- his dad charges five hundred an hour shit and yeah yeah no it's i bet your cmo buddy isn't as good as or as worth as much as, as uh, this guy is probably not yeah organic farming i think a bit of a it's you know the economy economies for economies of a uh, scale and, and other financial aspects of it it's uh, yeah yeah no, that's, yeah that's this would have been just straight people. marketing from a person that didn't seem to be as good of it as good at it as me but that's, that's that's like the classic business owner conceitedness, right? You're like, I can't, no one can do it as good as me, and then you get it over no, your no, head because no. you're trying to do every job. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, well, they definitely can do it as well as us, uh, and and frankly, some of them can do it a lot better. But for seven fifty an hour, wow, that's you better I, I don't be have Jesus. To be very good. Yeah, yeah I don't exactly. Have to be very good. I could be pretty crappy at this for seven fifty an hour, like if yeah. <laughs> I if if my time is worth. Fifty dollars an hour. If even if it's worth two fifty, that's three hours for every one of yours. I could be a third as good at it as you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's still more economical to hire myself over you. Yes, yes, exactly. It's yeah. it's the yeah yeah. It's just no no. You don't get seven fifty an hour is one point five mil a year. What what a fortune? What what a what publicly traded company are you running? Yeah yeah exactly. I'm with you on that. Like what? What executive? Where? Where did you come from? 
and I, I have family that was uh, finance, that were uh, VPs in, in different entertainment companies making a few hundred thousand, not even million, a few hundred thousand, and that guy has the gall to charge 1.5 mil annualized. Yeah, she really had a set of balls on her, I'll tell you that. Oh, wow. But like, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't believe she was worth it, so I didn't hire her. <laughs> I have been trying to find some sort of marketing sales other. Um, and at the end of the day, what I've come to the conclusion of is uh, I got a HyperX quadcast mic for $140. A, That's the uh, red one. A couple scissor arms. Yep. Nice. Uh, a couple scissor arms for like 60 bucks. Uh, a USB to iPhone adapter for that mic because you have a phenomenal 4K 60 frames per second camera in your pocket, most likely, if you've got an iPhone. And uh, yeah, that, and then a green screen for another forty bucks. Nice and for around. I think it turns out to be around three hundred dollars ish. I, I can spend film. way more than that in this podcast studio. Well, yeah, but I'm also only trying to film myself in front of a green screen or myself magnetizing toys. Nice. So in six seconds, like, what are you, you going to say? Low budget? Yes, yes, it was. I mean, this Very is fairly budget. like I think we. I think it's, I think SKA spent like three grand on the studio here. So. It's, you can go wild with it, but at the end of the day, I'm selling magnets, and most of the YouTubers I'm advertising in front of, I, uh, from what I can tell with this mic, I will have a better mic uh, audio quality than half of the YouTubers that I put my ads in front of. Well, I think we benchmarked ours, and yours is higher quality than the ones that are in the studio. So. Yeah, it's... I, I can't, I, I really need affiliate links for everything I own because I, I sell the crap out of everything. Like the HyperX Quadcast, not the S. The S is garbage RGB. It, if you want the color, it's great. Just just the HyperX Quadcast. If you want the color, you are exactly. a hipster douche of such epic proportion. You don't deserve a good microphone. Oh my gosh. Well, okay, <laughs> hold on. If, if, uh, if Ashley was doing this, her color is purple. If she was streaming and her mic was on camera, I could see her getting a purple one. And that would be a reasonable thing for her to do. Okay, so she would want it just because she could make it purple. Yes. All right. And also, she's you know those girls that are just pink. She's purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple's I, better. She, I um. She's got a purple ring. Dating it's a purple right now. It's it's a good it's, color. It's otherwise don't get the RGB thing. Just just keep your mic off camera. <laughs> the uh this it's solid mic. They're scissor arms for forty dollars that do the job. If it's. I kept trying to figure out how to advertise, like get somebody, pay someone to advertise for me. And it's like, okay, so if you try and get an independent contractor, they're like $2,000 a week or $1,500 a week. And you're, and you're sitting there going, that's 75 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. And you're working part-time for me. I'm just going to go hire somebody for 80,000 and pay them benefits. <laughs> <laughs> you really, like, do you know who Scorpion or all these other ad agencies hire for, for, uh, for 40,000 a year? Like the, yeah, hire some decent out of college ones, 60,000. I worked in promotion? advertising. Yeah, it was, uh, that's what it was. I mean, you were, I was getting paid. I don't know if I can say I was getting paid. Uh, we'll do it in terms of percentages. Um, I was getting billed out for, I want to say about 15 times what I was getting paid. So put it that way. Yeah. I mean, some of that is, is if they have you in a building, buildings are ridiculously expensive. They're almost, I think there's a, to put you in an office is as expensive as paying you to be there. Yeah, it's, it's absurd. I, um, I've, I'm actually really glad. I mean, it sucks for people that own, you know, commercial real estate right now, but I'm really glad that like COVID has made it acceptable to work from home because I mean, we were doing it already. I mean, SK is a pretty small business. And so, you know, I'm in. I come into the studio to record these things, but for the most part, I mean, I, I administrate our projects from home and it's great, you know, and the fact that everyone's doing it now, I mean, it's only kind of been, you know, like, yep, told you so. <laughs> like, well, and, and it will allow American businesses to drop their price and be more competitive. Yeah, I agree. If, if uh, half or two thirds of your company's cost are labor and overhead for the labor, then you can cut that number potentially in half. So you can cut your cost by 10, 20%. And most large companies are only making five or 10% if they're lucky. So, I mean, it, it just allows the price of everything to go down by tens of percent, potentially depending on, uh, on how things are going. That's a game changer. Um, 
Yeah, now it has some costs. So I'm looking at getting, uh, so uh, one of the expansions we're looking at doing is some magnetic sheeting for crickets, uh, the die cutting machines. Okay, I thought you meant like the animal. I was like, oh. No, C-R-I-C-U-T. Uh, the cricket <laughs> maker is a good one. So anybody listening, so if, if you don't know what a die cutting machine or a cricket is, which Spencer doesn't know what a cricket is either, uh, the cricket I'm, is... I'm picturing a clicker press. Think it's think like a printer, like a normal printer, a little wider, uh, and it takes a piece of fabric on a sticky pad on a mat, uh, and then it cuts it with like so, a laser, like a drag knife, a blade, or it's just die cutting. It's die cutting. Okay, so that do you know what a clicker press is? No. So it's also die. So it's it it comes down with it's, a steel die and it goes like. Oh, click. this. Yep. Yeah. Hence clicker. This, yep. Okay. Sorry. Yes, I do know what those are. Yeah. Um, but it, so it's it's a die cutting machine, but it's also you know it, it's thick laser cutter meets die cutting machine. So you can change the shape of the thing you're cutting. So it literally takes a blade and goes around like this on the fabric and moves oh, the fabric so that's, roll back and forth. That's why I refer to it as a drag knife. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, because it's dragging a blade that can twist yep. based on where it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So there, there's a huge market for for crickets now and, and silhouettes which the cricket seems to be doing much better than the silhouette i wouldn't my personal review of the cricket is probably go for a cricket silhouette seems like they have pretty bad customer service cricket is very happy to take your money when you break their machine so at <laughs> least they respond to you well yeah i mean that's respectable i i will pay you know 10 times more for a product with good customer service than they're similarly priced and i think the cricket's more reliable nice the uh but so uh, what we're doing with this the sheeting is we're trying to offer because I actually don't carry fridge magnet like that the final uh, magnet sheet. Uh, I don't actually sell it as a product. We do actually cut it, but uh, I want to actually start expanding past this gaming sector and I want to actually have this. So problem with that though is this stuff is big. I'm used to magnets that are one millimeter. I my my price my inventory is tens of cubic feet total. Um, if I was to have that in the same dollar value in magnet sheeting, it'd be hundreds of cubic feet. Um, so we're looking at placing an order that is, I think, close to 500 pounds, which is, I think, the largest order of anything I've ever placed, weight-wise and <laughs> volume-wise. Because I, again, used to very, very small things. And this is this goes to the working from home thing. We have to have a truck with the lift gate come to our house. Both of those, all three of those things have a price. Liftgate is more expensive than if they can just shove it off into a loading dock. Which, yeah. you know, house, not warehouse. Uh, and then residential, they charge an extra fee on top of the trucking fee to you. Like, oh, Jesus. Waiting for that quote. Waiting for that quote right now. I'm sure that'll be great. But, uh, can you just set up a loading dock? To, like, like uh, just like fucking build some plywood and get like a little deck structure going and say, this is my loading dock? Yeah. Yes, yes, you could. The trucker doesn't care. As long as you take it off his truck in a reasonable, timely manner without breaking anything, he does not care. Cool. I mean, maybe that's a move, but like... Uh, yes. It, right now, currently in a condo. So, oh. sidewalks aren't ours, and no, uh, no garage. So, yes, all of that. Also, I don't... I can't imagine the guy driving up and seeing that going like, the hell? <laughs> This ain't a loading dock. I've been duped. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes like the, the I don't know if the trucks always have it, like that that lift gate set up. Yeah, yeah. What what I, what I was recommending is if you just built a platform at the height of no, the I, truck bed. I know, I know. Yeah. So, but like they'd be like, "What the f is this?" Yeah, 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 that's funny. Have you so seen I the loading know. docks where with the lo whole loading dock is like a jack and will go up and down to like no, get to the height of the truck? That sounds cool. Yeah, they ha they have a bunch at uh, Carnegie Mellon where I went to school, um, where like we would do dumpster diving when I was there. So there was always cool stuff getting thrown out. I remember there were these um, '80s industrial robots that were being tossed out. There were two of them with control electronics, which were in full racks. So there were two full racks and two robot arms. And um, my stupid ass rented a U-Haul to get these to to me. And so I um. It took us 12 hours to get them down the street to that loading dock that lifted them up into the back of the U-Haul. And what we should have done was gotten a lift gate. <laughs> Not to worry about it. Yeah.
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's I can't, that's the kind I had to call the campus to police to be like, we're going to have a U-Haul loading these robots up in the middle of your walking area. They're like, okay, cool. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, this is not politically correct, but I was like, oh, you're white. All right. And I keep doing it. <laughs> you're supposed to be taking that. You look yeah, like exactly. you're supposed to be here. Yeah, exactly. Right? You're white and you're wearing nice clothing. You look like you're supposed to be here. Looks official. Yeah. God, it's like half i mean it's sad but like i feel like a lot of the time it's like half the battle is just looking like you belong um people are like oh yeah, absolutely yeah exactly i mean that that is looking like you're supposed to be there i uh one of my mom's friends is a uh, she's a doctor african-american doctor uh i think she's cool. one of three or four kids they grew up in uh either the palisades or beverly hills very 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 well off area yeah aff um, affluent the, af uh very very dark skinned by the way like it's we're not we're as african-american as you can be yeah uh, uh and unfortunately setting the stage for what's coming next which is so dad gets his kid it gives the kid the old mercedes to drive yeah. around to go get groceries um older son the, the whole family's huge by the way like football players uh the the, <laughs> the girl i know that the woman is uh i think she's six two or something holy she's crap two. i'm five eleven um, so <laughs> yeah her her brothers are like six five six seven or something too. nice so whole family is gigantic very well off very very well educated. yeah she got the beater merc yeah of course they're well off well yeah exactly got the beater merc uh well so they go he gets groceries i think her older brother gets groceries on the way back gets pulled out of his car through the window oh jesus now this is in the 90s so this is not this year but like that is the kind of crap that happens that's fucked up that that is the kind of person who because i think he stole the car and he's and i mean she had the same thing happen she'd get pulled over like what are you doing in this neighborhood who'd you steal this car from it's my dad's like uh-huh it's it's like you know license registration and it's the same last name right and then the address matches her id and the cops like okay and just like suspiciously looking at her as she drives into a multi-million dollar house in the 90s <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and like you know five-year-old mercedes or something like she's a doctor i, I forget what her brothers do what Call kind of doc is she uh what does she do? I know she was in an STD clinic for a while. Cool. Uh, I know she's probably. I can't remember. No worries. In general. My dad's an orthopedist. Um, actually, she's done a lot. She's done a lot of different things, which is why I can't remember. She's told me about different places she's worked, so I, I couldn't wouldn't place her for what she does. Well, and some people switch. So, like my my one buddy Nick um, started off. Uh, Nick for Nikhil is an Indian dude. Started off as um, a the heck was he in his residency i feel like he was um he was a radiologist and then he went to anesthesiology which i mean relatively low paying medical fields i mean you know they're making like 400 grand you know instead of yeah, like yeah. eight or nine Just, so. no anesthesiology is actually the top one yeah yeah i think it's actually it's one or two did not know that all right i thought uh, surgeons also, made way more money but no, gen so I've got a friend who's a general surgeon. They work her like a dog, and they pay her squat compared. That sucks. Yeah, it's. My it's, dad was saying know, to me like specialists make more, you know, and he was trying to relate it to my field. So, I mean, I'm a roboticist. I'm kind of a generalist. Um, but you know, he's like, once you specialize, that's when you'll start making real money. <laughs> so. Real money. This is the same guy that said weddings are a good place to get laid, and that my job as a Jew was to compete with the Asians and the Indians in school. Never mind that Indians are Asians. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, probably throwing the old man under the bus a little bit here. <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, that's that's what old men are for. Yeah, he's, he's a good dude. I like him a lot. But, you know, I mean, he grew up in the 70s, so that's just that's the era he came from. He also met O.J. Simpson. Um, so he in was... In front of or behind bars? Uh, before any of that happened. Oh, okay. So this would have been in the 90s, and um, my dad, like, loves to golf, and he's like, Spence, I'll golf with anyone. I love to golf, you know? And so apparently he saw this dude at, like, a golf club who just was off on his own, 
My name is OJ. And he just goes, hey, man, you want to play a game? <laughs> and he's like, I would love to, but I got to go do a charity benefit. And I, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so the next day, my dad was golfing. And one of his buddies was like, that was OJ Simpson you were talking to, like the football player. <laughs> he probably... I I can't imagine he looked the same thing as the story before. I can't believe I can't I, I wouldn't expect him to look uh, at home on a golf course from uh, from the security standpoint. How do you mean? Uh, it's just the size of the man. Yeah, he's How, fucking I, huge. I, I, I would. I'm pretty sure. OJ's, I mean, if if you say professional he's a football player. player. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I just I don't know. I think golf, and I think tall, skinny, white dude. Like yeah, yeah for sure. Or like fat, fat white dude, dude, like smoking yeah, a cigar. Depending on the age, like yeah. a pound per a pound per year of age, one or two pounds per year. Since we're talking about white dudes, dudes. <laughs> yeah. so I have a friend who is a wealth manager, and she was um, with this firm, which I'm not going to name, but uh, I remember she got sued by her previous firm for. <laughs> um, she a bunch of clients went and found her after she left, so she was getting sued for solicitation. But she wasn't soliciting. The, the people were coming to her. So, you know, like it wasn't her fault. And basically, she said this to these guys that owned her new firm. And she's like, Spence, you got to understand. This is old white guys talking. And she's like, we want to tell them, fuck you. you know? like, so they countersued. <laughs> yeah. She was the first one to fight it, apparently. Like that, that firm would bully so many people. And usually they would just settle. But, you know, she was able to win the case. So it was kind of good. Good for you. For yeah. her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's awesome. I, but I, I just I love to picture like Statler and Waldorf going, "We want to tell him, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I, I really wonder what's happening at this work at home thing because it's going to change prices and I mean it, it's our life was determined by work before. So we're Starbucks. We're located. Uh, office buildings are now going to be converted into our apartments or nice. all, right. Like all, all these different things are, are no longer what we need them to be. Yeah, yeah for sure. So I'm, I'm really curious. And then there's this whole, like, I, it doesn't make sense for the foreseeable future for me to rent out a workshop, or like a, any sort of office or warehousing space. I'm with Why you. Why not st stuff it in a basement? Like, so we're buying a house and we're, we're, we're trying to buy a house in the next six months. Um, and the market keeps going the way it, you say it's going. Please text me about this because I might buy one as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, what'll happen? It'll go back to the price it was before. Because that price Makes is still there. I, I think what's about to happen is we're about to go back to where we were before. It depends on what deflationary hits we have. It depends on any other black swan events. But um, what it what the market would do naturally, if left alone right now, would go probably back to where it was before, a little bit lower because momentum, and then pop back up. Uh, it's it's basically going to correct to what it ought to have been this whole time. Um, I think just because of the rate, the way the rest of the world is going with all the other deflationary pressures, I think it actually might end up lower. For I would I would imagine for a little bit at least, right? Because you it's think momentum. correction, you think like, you know, it's like a sine wave. It's like a badly tuned PID control. Yes. So it's going to dip below and then it'll go back to where it ought to have been. You would you would you would think. Yep. As a yeah, student of economics. Great. Yeah, exactly. So we're we're timing it. We're you know, we have a lease up on February first or uh, January thirty first. So <laughs> February by February first, hopefully uh, that has all played out, and I am the proud owner of a thirty year mortgage. Nice, right? Like that's that's the hope and the dream. But uh, we're, we're stuffing the whole business in the basement. I'm going to get a uh, expansion, which is going to be great. I'm going to get the whole basement to myself so that we can lock it up and keep the the cats out. <laughs> um, that, okay, so I left my workshop open today, and this is every day that I leave my door open. I left it open, ran upstairs, got distracted for five minutes, came back down. So I was upstairs for 10 to 15 minutes, and there was a cat just staring at me, looking at all the possibilities of the room. I was just, like, staring. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, wow, where do I start? I want to roll on all these all things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's all these little tiny things that a cat would totally want to play with that will roll around these acry tiny acrylic rods, uh, little three-printed boulders. <laughs> oh, God, that would be horrible. Magnets. Oh, my God. It's 
I we left. I we forgot it. I I was doing something distracted. We started some food. <laughs> Printers ran out. Left the light on. Left the door open. Went to a party. Slept over at my buddy's place like we planned. Came back the next day at like noon. Uh, we were gone for about twenty hours, and I I came downstairs and my door was open, and I'm like, oh, oh. So we've still been finding that. This is a, a week a week and a half ago. We are still finding acrylic and ball bearings, and magnets <laughs> and rocks. Just it shows up at the underneath the kitchen table in the morning. It shows up in the middle of the hallway, oh, different no. floors of the house, and I'm like, oh. God, when is this going to stop? It's <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, where did she get all of this? Did they go? It, there's bins. Did, did, was that the stuff that was on the floor? Did, how much film? One of the cat, the, the younger cat loves eating filament. Like oh, a, no. So off of the 3D printer, if, if you've got little squirrely filament, like the purge lines or like the, the nozzles purging, it kind of looks like a crow's nest. Yeah. Uh, and she loves to chug that and choke it down. And, Gross. Uh, usually, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, how much of that did she eat? <laughs> what else did she eat? My, I'm horrified to find out what she... She hasn't thrown up. And it's this is why people so. buy veterinary insurance, I feel like. I told Ashley we get a new one, and I know that's heartless, but it was a barn cat, and she was free. Yeah, fair enough. I, I'm not paying $2,000. I'm not paying for insurance, which will cost me $2,000, and I'm not paying $2,000 to pull filament out of the cat's stomach. I'm just going to let National Selection take its course. Yeah, there was uh, an engineer that I worked with briefly who had about 30 cats. And um, this was in a facility that, like, there should not be electrostatic discharge. <laughs> you know, like, it was, like, high-sensitivity machines. And this was, this was a good electrical engineer, but, like, you know how some engineers are. Like, problems with authority just cannot. So, I mean, this guy, as much as I, I liked him and, and his style and, and who he was, it was impossible to work with. <laughs> Because uh, just not, just not able to be part of a team, you know. It was just like, I don't know. It you can have, there are some very interesting people who you can't put together in a room, and sometimes that person you can't put in the room with them is anybody else. <laughs> like it's, I mean, Tesla and Edison, right? Yeah. Like imagine, imagine what they would imagine what they did. It was well, we kind of know what they achieved together. Imagine what they would have achieved if they continued being together. For sure. Like, and I know Tesla was working for Edison, but imagine if if those two colossal colossus uh, inventors of their age didn't break apart in an, an angry divorce. I mean, all it would have instead. taken was like fifty grand, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I know that's probably simplifying it, but like. It, it would not have taken a lot of money to pacify Tesla. Correct. And it would have taken an infinite amount of money to pacify Edison. Sure. <laughs> His problem... So Tesla's ego was, wasn't big enough then, but Edison's was. From what I can, what I, I can read. Yeah. So Edison was, was hotshot who said, who are you? And then, you know, his, his, hindsight 2020, he was Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Who, who he was. <laughs> yeah. But like... Right, like, who are you? Get out of here, basically. Like, go, go, whatever. But like, if those two had actually like really worked together, like, damn, flying cars fifty years ago, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, Maybe. I don't doubt it. No, it's, it, his name is Elon Musk, and he's also impossible to work with. I work for the guy. I he, agree with he's, you. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, he got forcibly booted from PayPal. It, it's actually, I didn't even realize that. Either, like bought out forcibly booted he went on vacation and kind of like they like voted him out basically but like he like took over something and like turned the ship around and then went on vacation like kicked them out because they hated him like yeah. power struggle he's he's kind of what do you think I'm of peter thiel uh i don't know enough about him he's it's uh, by the way to to all these people any of you who hear me call you or nikola tesla or edison a butt like i'm not far off like I just want to <laughs> I am hard to work for, I am hard to work with sometimes. I just wanted this to be absolutely clear that this is this is pot and kettle. I, I'm the pot there, the kettle. Like this is don't don't think I'm saying that I'm some sort of like angel child. This is uh, like I I fully <laughs> what uh, Ashley asked me why Elon is is either like why why people like Elon are hard to work for, why uh, why people are like this or what's wrong with 
whatever it is, what who are these people and why are they the why do people perceive Elon Musk as uh, I'm going to say a narcissist? Uh, why why do they perceive him like that? And and frankly, for Elon in particular, some of it's Aspergers. Yeah. For the, the rest of us that aren't diagnosed Aspergers, it's everything but a diagnosis because we're called engineers at the end of the day. Um, yeah, no, it's especially. something I've been coming to terms with. Right, is like. I mean, nobody wants that diagnosis because, I mean, you look like not great, right? But I'm like, I probably have a little bit of that. <laughs> like, well, and here's the thing, though. It's because you and I and them all just don't have the same values or interests uh, or mindset as that. Like, we're not really that awkward around each other. Yeah, that's like, right. We're, we're, we're like, we're... You put all of us in a room, and we're all talking about robots and and batteries and uh, and explosions within five minutes around each other. You put any of us by ourselves in a room with other people, and we're like, "How long before I can suck start this shotgun?" I'm like, Whew. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Well, and so there was. Um, I applied to prep school when I was younger, and and there was a really prestigious prep school called Milton Academy that I got accepted into. I think Andover did not accept me because I kept talking about explosives in the interview. <laughs> I uh, ended up going to neither because I got in trouble at my other, my public school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's my opinion on engineers though. It, it's, I mean, you have a similar story to, was it Newton who got kicked out of high school? I think um, I Newton, I Einstein, I mean, a bunch of people, right? Like, I think um, Descartes, maybe, I'm thinking of. There, there was some some famous writer that, that kept getting kicked out. Um, like, he kept, <laughs> it's fucking bad. I, I don't know if it's Descartes. It might have been, um, who am I thinking of? There was somebody that kept getting sodomized at boarding school and, like, was complaining to his parents <laughs> because of it. And like it was pretty bad, right? Like the sort of back in it, like don't send me back there. I keep getting sodomized. Quit making up stories. I don't know if that's Rene Descartes. Oh my gosh. We'll say it's Rene Descartes. I'll send all hate mail to podcast. In this case. God. It's it's kind of a weird thing because so public schools are not necessarily made for us. And I don't necessarily mean that as in like, oh, I was too good for public school or I was too good for high school. Oh. I was too good for any of this stuff. It's just, we go there and we're supposed to learn things, but you have to do it at, at, at all subjects at the speed that the class can learn at collectively. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of people, you have, or not a lot of people, but you have enough people that they just, they're not interested in learning like that. And they learned that at halfway through the sentence that the teacher started the subject with, they already figured out what the sentence is going to finish with. And the next two paragraphs that she's going to read off her slide. Yep. And it's already been committed to memory. And at that point there, that kid is now bored and more interested <laughs> in making an explosive. <laughs> if that or explosive is shooting a paper airplane with a rubber band into somebody's butt and they jump up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That That's, that's the problem is, is that it's, there are people who can just get it quicker or who have just no interest in the topic and are really good at something else. And they, they it's, it's this whole, the, I'm going to call it the engineering class is, is a, almost a, is so, is almost so different from normies, if you will, that it's hard to put us in the room with other people. Yeah. By the way, I consider myself a, a, an engineer. I'm not, an engineer by I mean I have gone to school for a lot of different things it's I call myself an engineer but I don't have my, my degree is in computer science and I have one in robotic systems development but I don't and I have another one in business administration I don't know but what I do is engineering I, that's my job yeah well I was talking personality wise there are engineers and I think I think there's like a subclass or a sister class of, of like inventors because uh, at the end of the day we're both tinkerers but the inventors are this sort of like mad scientist i thought of myself that way when i was a kid but then i realized there's no money in it <laughs> so, yeah, better to be fine. an engineer <laughs> i'm doing i'm doing okay with it so it yeah. it depends on what you're inventing um 
Invent quick, invent light, sell a lot. You're really good at that, though. Like, I have to say, I really do admire your ability to go, like, um, you know, low margin, high volume. Because the business model that I've always operated under is, is low volume, high margin. And, and being able to, you know, like, sell a little bit. But, you know, like, you know, we talked about that white glove experience, you know, just being able to, to really knock out the park and, and sell premium goods. And, you know, it's, it's all baroque, not baroque, um, bespoke and, um, you know, custom to what the user needs or, or your customer. Um, and that's kind of where I've always lived, but I know some people that have done so well on high volume. I mean, Walmart, you know, like Amazon, I mean, those companies have made fortunes on you know, low margin, high volume sales. And so there's a lot to be said for that. Well, and I've got a weird one too. So I'm, I'm a bit. I'm not high volume by any stretch. I'm, I'm tens of orders, hundreds of orders a week. Um, so thousands a year. But yeah, but I'm, we maybe see three clients at a time in those, yeah, those exactly. last half a year. So I'm, I'm not Amazon by any stretch though. Just, like I, I am that like step up from where you're at, that like next category of how many clients do you see at a time? Um, and from there, the thing that I've done is I've created a bunch of very unique products, which is the inventor aspect. Uh, so, so those, like I, I mentioned movement trays. So imagine you're playing a game with uh, 200 different action figures on the table. Yeah. Uh, you're on a chess clock because you're in a tournament, so you have to move those. So traditionally, you take a plastic tray with recesses and move those. So you put them in there. Except if you bump the plastic tray, you put it on a, a three-dimensional terrain feature, your whole squad falls over 20, 30 models. And now you're on clock picking your stuff back up. Oh, no. So I looked at that. Yeah, and so I look at that and go, okay, so the problem here is we have things that need to be attached to other things but need to be easily removable. That sounds like a magnet. Yeah. So I find a way to make ferromagnetic trays and then give people magnets for the, their models so they stick When you to say the ferromagnetic, do you mean just like a sheet of iron on one side and a magnet on the other side? Uh, ferromagnetic would be, which is, so think iron is ferromagnetic. A, a brick, a sheet metal is ferromagnetic, ferrite. Anything to be magnetized, but isn't magnetic by itself. Yeah. So in that case, and the reason why that's important is you don't want polarity there because if you have polarity on one part of it and then you give somebody a magnet, you don't have to match those. You have to, to and it's always going to be polarity. facing the same way. Yeah. Yep. So, or 50% of the time it will be. So the point I try to make everything I do uh, in, in this industry uh, as a retrofit, as much as I can possibly make as the ability to, uh, there, take an existing piece and stick my product on it because there are more models, there are more products in existence than there will be in the net, in your horizon that you care about. Yeah. Not in the future, but th this, this game has been around for almost 40 years now. There I only know, 40 years. 1985. I thought longer for some reason. Um, no. You mentioned a World War II veteran starting it, so that's why I guess I... Uh, Jared Tolkien was actually one of their friends. It's why Games Workshop actually had... This is the Warhammer company. Uh, Games Workshop uh, yeah. founder... I can't remember his name. Uh, Tolkien was actually a good friend of his. They went to the a local... They were the drinking vice. Nice. Uh, which is why Games Workshop has the, the, the middle of the Lord of the Rings miniature line. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, so they, they, they actually were... You know, they, they I can just imagine Tolkien negotiating that, like, don't fuck me on this. Like, I want to get my royalty every time you sell a Gandalf. Don't fuck me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That would uh, be amazing. I'm sure that it's, conversation happened. I'm sure. it's. They started out, by the way, with literally... So they, they had enough money for one injection mold. So they wanted to make a space marine, which is exactly what you think it is. Think Halo Super Soldier. Okay. Uh, but so they wanted to make Play space Master marines Chief. versus... Yeah, yeah. Uh, they wanted to make space marines versus uh, I don't remember what they wanted the enemy to be, but they wanted to have some other let's some say, kind enemy. of like alien. Yeah, yeah. So I'm picturing yep. like Starcraft with like whatever the fuck uh, that so, enemy was. Bookmark Starcraft in the mind for a moment, because uh, we're gonna come back to that one because that this is where Starcraft came from. Uh, okay. But so they had one injection mo enough money for one injection mold, so they made blue and red, and Chaos Space Marines were born. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos Space Marine. <laughs> they could didn't have enough money to make a second injection mold, so they had blue and red ones. So the Space Marines were fighting other Space Marines. They couldn't have like an alien enemy. Okay. 
because they couldn't didn't have enough injection bolt uh, money for the injection molds. They're pretty expensive. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, they, it's not cheap to have those hard tools, especially at this detail level. Uh, so the the whole chaos space marine thing long term they they flushed it out so that they're trader legions right like that that's their uh, solution oh interesting so like one so of they, them is like the nationalist the other one's like the rebels or whatever uh rebel okay we'll call, yes rebels is a good description except this is a post-apocalyptic star trek universe post-apocalyptic star trek yes yeah, so star trek meant to be like really civilized and yes this is a, a, a star trek apocalypse so what happened? So like, if that world were to have an apocalypse, what would happen? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I, one of the apocalypses is artificial intelligence rebelled uh, and just, just every, they rose up and killed everything. Like yeah. it was, it brought the the galaxy to the brink of uh, annihilation. It took all of the different sentient races to put down the uh, the men of iron that that humanity created. Uh, and the reason they rebelled, so they're, they're, they're men of iron being the AI. What? Men of Iron being the artificial intelligence. Yep. Um, and so the other thing that the other part of the post-apocalyptic thing is uh, the warp in Star Trek, like warp drive is, is a way to travel throughout the universe quickly. In Warhammer, it is the same thing, except uh, the some of the space elves and different factions have murder fucked a uh, different chaos demon gods into existence inside of the immaterium the warp when you say murder fuck do you mean they've just murdered enough people that like a they, demon god has just taken force so the the elves have like the, the elves basically literally just had murder fuck orgies <laughs> on mass and i do, do so mean murdering murder. and fucking in the same orgy okay yeah well that yeah, sounds like masturbation just... material for a lot of nerds yeah yeah exactly yeah. so <laughs> they basically murder fucked a, a a god of excess into existence in in the warp and now the warp rather than being this like peaceful way to travel is this hellish way to travel and they have special fields that allow them to travel through it that don't let them be seen by these demons except every now and then they just get kind of screwed with they kind of they can't necessarily get them but they mess with them so they show up on the other side of the galaxy when it should have taken two weeks to travel five thousand years late oh or sometimes a hundred years before interesting so they show up early. So they just have... The, the warp has become this tumultuous uh, murderfuck orgy of, of demons and gods uh, and, and emotions. So basically just warp-based apocalypse for, uh, for Star Trek. That's interesting. So like, what, what is the... I, I guess I've, I've watched a bit of Star Trek... So when I was in high school, I guess because I was a high achiever, I never let myself watch Star Trek because I don't want to be labeled a nerd. Because in the 90s, you get your fucking head kicked in, right? Like, I mean, yeah. these days, you know, you'll, you'll get laid and people will look up to you or whatever. Back then, it wasn't cool. So, you know, you don't want to be labeled that. So, like, I, I would do all kinds of stuff to, like, kind of set myself apart and be like, no, I like making stuff, but I ain't no nerd. You know, and so when I was in grad school, I finally let myself watch Star Trek. So I watched The Wrath of Khan. I watched The Next Generation. I watched a bunch of the stuff with um, what's his dick McGillicuddy, uh, the guy that plays Captain Kirk. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, um, William Shatner. And so, um, and then the dude that was Spock, uh, the Jewish guy, whatever the fuck his name was, um, Leonard Nimoy. Yes. And so, um, and Takei and all those those cats. And so I, I started to really like it. Um, and so I know a little bit, but I guess I don't fully understand. So warp is meant to be faster than the speed of light. And it's a so way to bend space time. So you're going into like a different dimension, essentially? Yes. In, in Warhammer, they describe it as the immaterium, where space and time don't flow in normal ways. So the laws of physics don't apply. It's In, in the Warhammer universe, it is a... Uh, and what it, if you have enough p people believe something to be true, then it is true. Interesting. So if you believe that you have a totem that protects you from demons, and a billion people on that planet believe that, then a demon shows up and tries to attack that totem, it will protect them from that demon. That's because cool. Because enough people believe it. So it's this really trippy thing where they explain a bunch of, uh, they call them MacGuffins, or these, these garbage tropes as just Warcraft. Because... It opens up the ability for things that are science fiction that shouldn't work to work. Yeah, okay. 
where and, and there's a whole race by the way the orcs in this particular universe uh they literally have weapons that are just like some screws some bolts some springs inside of a casing that looks like a gun and they think it works and enough of them think it works and they're they they think hard enough and they have like co uh, cockney and accents or something um, and they think hard enough, and suddenly their guns work, and their tanks drive, and you go take apart the gun, and it's just like rattling around in there, loose. But it but it works in battle. That's interesting. When there's enough of them, but if you can you can cut off the head and make them think it's not working anymore, like that that their plan is failing, they'll bail, and suddenly everything falls apart. That's interesting. It's a very straight, like, it's a very entertaining way to explain science fiction stuff. And it also has this, like, hilarious... I mean, it sounds like a pretty um, feeble plot device, but sort of a fun one as well. Well, okay, so it's double-edged sword. Because that warp also is full of demons. So if you try and use it too much, then they can show up and they don't obey the laws of physics either. So there's, like, the zombie god who you'll see, like, rusty... Like uh, hold uh, blades, like knives, held by shambling zombies that'll cut straight through armor. So you get wrecked either direction, and like people are like, oh, they don't look that threatening until they get to them, and it turns out it's warp craft. And it's, it's this very, it's a very, uh, it's less feeble than you think it is most of the time. Yeah, uh, because it's it's a quantity of uh, it's a quantity thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it sort of does. So, I mean, I, what I'm it, getting is that like it spreads. The quantity is the quantity of entities that believe, believe. the thing works. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And the, the and and as it spreads, it gets worse. It contaminates. It, it's a contagion. Interesting. So, so like people and, and humans and sentient life and other life go ap go insane and and start fueling it basically. That kind of makes sense. I mean, if you've seen something work, it's not that insane to be like, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And then when you exactly. say that's a thing by your logic, that reinforces its existence and it works better. Exactly. It, it, it's this circular argument of it works because I thought I, I saw it work yeah. and then it works because you and I both saw it work and then it works better. Like it's, it's not as linear as that, but it, it tends to overflow rather quickly because it spreads quickly. That makes sense. Uh, but it's it's I think it's one of the most flushed out uh, lore wise universes in existence over Star Wars over Star Trek. It almost and sounds more like fantasy than science fiction. It's to really kind out of myself as a nerd here. It's it's both. There are there are lots of it's it's mostly sci fi, but there's a lot of fantasy in there. But uh, so you mentioned Starcraft though, it sounds a lot like Starcraft. So. Fun story, a uh, much younger Games Workshop contracted a, a uh, little-known company at the time called Blizzard to make a game for never heard Warhammer 40,000 Universe. Yeah, never heard of either of those two. <laughs> uh, and so Blizzard's working on this. At some point, Games Workshop pulls the plug and goes, you know, we're, we're just, whatever, we're not funding this or we're done or we don't like what they see. I'm not you sure guys what exactly decks. happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pro more likely, they had an infight and decided that, that video games just weren't the way of the future uh, in the 90s. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, fun story. Blizzard sitting on there going like, okay, so we have a bunch of mechanics. We have a game. We have a universe. We have lore. What do we do? I guess we reskin this. We're, like, almost done. They said we can have it. So I guess we just reskin this whole thing and call it StarCraft? Nice. So, StarCraft is the Warhammer universe reskinned because Games Workshop bailed on one of the most successful video games of all time. Yeah, ever made, I would say. Yeah, yeah, the, the GW that was Games Work. That is more the Warhammer universe. That is it. That like that whole the Protoss or the Tau, the Zergar Tyranids, the alien and bugs. That like that is that that's why that's why you when you said it, it sounds like StarCraft. No, no, StarCraft sounds like Warhammer. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. They, uh, it's, I, I can't imagine if they'd actually held on to it. They probably screwed it up, realistically. Probably. But, uh, but it's one of those things, it's like, man, GW, what did, what did you do? You could have been mainstream decades ago. George Washington, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that is the industry that I, I lean on right now. Interesting. That is, it. That is 
I was I was not supposed to do that when I was trying to graduate col or college when I was graduating college. <laughs> I did that. I have a di I have a diploma. I have awards behind me to prove it. Uh, what are those two when, pyramids behind you, by the way? Those are awards. I don't know if we're gonna get them in focus. As I blindly grope for them. All good. All right, so I see Constantine Greenius, 2014, 2015. No, I'm a blind cunt because I can't read what the award is for. Hashtag V2. <laughs> what, is, what does it say? This is probably the E-Challenge one. Uh, E-Challenge winner. So uh, startup competition thing for starting a, a company in class oh, in, cool. in a single semester and going. Nice. Um, and then this one's probably Entrepreneurial Spirit Award. Yeah, it looks like it. I see two lines. Um, I was in the process of talking to somebody, selling them on a product, like telling them like, oh man, this would be really great. It's my partner. I was like, tell me, you should do this. You should buy this thing because it'll help you. Like it's, you know, you, you need this thing because of, it's the HyperX Quadcast and it's a great mic. And uh, that's, this is exactly what it sounds like, right? Like this, this yeah. whole, they go, and for the award for the person who is constantly selling and really just embodies the entrepreneurial spirit, I'm like in the middle of talking to her, constantly greenius. And my mom goes, bam, you got an award. What? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't remember right. saying my name. I remember what he said beforehand, kind of. <laughs> I've got this 30 second recall that was really good in school. So I remember like in accounting class, I would put my feet up on the desk and I would, uh, you know, like go to sleep. I would put my head back, I would close my eyes. I would just be sleeping and I'd sort of have like a 30 second recall of what the professor was saying. And I remember um, I'd get called out. So I can ask questions, you know, like, and what is shareholders equity gonna be in this case? And I'd be like, ah, oh, probably about $30,500, you know? <laughs> I'd get it right, you know, and, and so I, I sort of had, after a while, I stopped getting called on because you know, she really she wasn't going to trip up. me up. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, I, yeah. There's actually, I dated a girl from that class, and, and she said, um, I always thought you were such a fuck up. <laughs> She'd see me acting like that, you know, and I, I sort of wanted people to think I was a fuck up so I could, you know, just... And, you know, wouldn't have to try that hard. It was kind of kind of a fun game. Yeah. yeah. No, I've I've had uh, my life has just been people pitying me and telling me how great it is that I can be so successful and do everything I can. <laughs> wow, that's that's really great to say to a blind person, stay at home mom. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Very nice. But uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, the, those two awards were both off steel glass, by the way. So. Steel glass? Steel glass, the, the unbreakable glass. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Chemical strength and stuff. So. Yeah. The, uh, that guy is, uh, he does, that process is used on most of the EpiPens in the country. Most of? The EpiPens. Nice. Epinephrine, yeah. It's fucking awesome. It's so, the so, same thing, basically. All right. Well, I think Every that's... time a glass breaks, every time a glass breaks, I go, uh, could have been steel glass. Shake my head sadly. Unless it was thrown at the corner of a table that's made out of metal. Oh, on its lip. Full. <laughs> While walking quickly. All over a customer's lap. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So, Constantine, um, I apologize. What kind of stuff are you working on that you'd like to drop uh, before we, we call the episode? So I have... Two new projects. One of them is very specific to uh, something near and dear to me uh, as a blind person. Sure. The we are working on a, a brailled label sticker labels for card games. Cool. Uh, and and other uh, games as well, but primarily looking at like unstable unicorns and exploding kittens as as two of the games we played. Nice. A lot. Uh, as what about cards against games? humanity? Can we do that in braille? Language? Yes. Yes. Nice. Uh, that's another good one. It's surprisingly not available like it the, we found brailled playing cards brailled old maid brailled uno and skibbo those, those games that suck see them. Uh, playing cards are great poker's a cool game especially without clothes or with as you use clothes uh, 
not as great when you're blind, but you know, whatever, you don't, you don't, you're not self-conscious about it, I guess. Yeah, but for sure. Uh, but, but like, I mean, the fact that there's some stakes and you know, there's sexualism and all that shit involved definitely makes everything better. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Pl- playing cards are fine. The other three uh, pass. Skibbo, depending on how drunk I am, I'll play it. Uh, but so it, it's been interesting to see that there's a lack of resources available. And I, I'm highly specialized in the magnifier. One of the things I do best is uh, relatively low volumes for products uh, with uh, different skews, so customization. Uh, so I'm, I'm applying what I do there to be able to do all these different games and, and get this out to a lot of different blind people. I would have to sit there with a handheld magnifier to try and uh, and read these games for a couple hours, which is yeah. I, so I'm just to, just for the viewers, I mean, you and I have talked about it. you're about like ninety five percent blind, right? Yep. Okay, so you can yep. still see, but you have to really zoom in, and it's difficult to I, figure out where to zoom. Yep, I, on a computer, I'm zoomed in ten times with voiceover on reading the screen. Got so, it. Uh, this this brand label thing is has some personal aspects and we realize that I'm not the only person who wants to play card games or who is playing card games. I know some other blind people who do. And it's been relatively frustrating, irritating, just an accepted pain point that we all have. And uh, Ashley is a uh, teacher of the deaf and teacher of the visually impaired or impending on that second one, uh, working on her degree. And it's like, what, this makes way too much sense for us not to help. Yeah. Um, so that that business does not have a website yet, but uh, it may by the time this episode goes out. And if it does, then I'll, I'll send it over to Please, Spencer. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get at it then. Sure. Um, and there's one other business which uh, we are working on. Uh, it, currently, it's on Etsy. It's Bar Assets, B-A-R-R-E, Assets. Cool. Uh, these grip socks, lacy grip socks for uh, for Pilates and yoga or for, uh, for maternity wards or for old folks' homes. Interesting. Uh, basically, cute grip socks. Uh, working on some for guys as well. I want to do some uh, some man focused socks as a man. I want to be a model for that. <laughs> yes. Oh my! I can't imagine the like. I we have to do some trope of like you know the the, the foot models for the girls are like perfect and what you would expect and the dudes are just like an eighty five year old uh, Persian or Greek man <laughs> like hello hairy as fuck the the canis. <laughs> <laughs> this That's is funny. Yanni. <laughs> Giannis Papas, like, Mr. Panos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Panos. Oh my god, I should get Mr. Pa- Pana- Panos <laughs> as one of the ads for this. Just just go with the whole like opposite of, of just like this is this is for your dad. Because <laughs> we know it's a woman shopping on the website, it's not for the guy shopping. <laughs> your dad what looks just the same as it always did in there. <laughs> <laughs> but so working on those two things right now, uh, looking to launch them. Um, the sock thing, we are waiting back. Uh, U.S. manufactured, both of them start to finish. Very cool. And, and everything completely sourced in the United States of America. Mo- likely from uh, North Carolina for the socks. No nice. So, you yeah. know we're in North Carolina yet? Uh, no, I don't. I work with an engineer in Durham. Uh, it's, I just, you know, I may have had enough drinks now. I'm like getting all excited because I know a person. <laughs> yeah right oh no it, it turns out that uh north carolina alabama are the seat of the socks and hosiery industry of the united states and i know alabama yeah. used to be i thought they got sort of taken by by offshore uh yes, manufacturing hollowed out hollowed out completely but it was Why? it was a particular s- city right like i can't remember what the name of it was but it was i think s- it's hayward hayford of north carolina that's like the seat of the north carolina side can't you might be right there the alabama one though i i Somebody was talking to me about that the other day, and I just can't remember for the life of me. But yeah, that's that that's that's the sock business. That's the braille label business. If if you know the, the the braille labeling thing, if you know other people who other, I'm in the game business. I work with small magnetbaron.com, the magnetbaron.com, one hour yeah. or two hours. You're all right Poison. either way. Or just search Magnet Baron on Google. I come up. That's one one of them. But yeah. It, if you know I still haven't seen what you look like in the costume yet. I probably should be Googling that. Like, shame on me. If it wasn't that hot today, I would be in it. But I, I would be <laughs> glistening right now. I thought about it. I don't have enough fan. Like, the top hat seals yet. So. There was somebody it's... that I um, had on. Uh, they go by Greek Gadget Guru. And they make superhero gadgets uh, for, like, a YouTube channel. And um, we're working on a project together. It's a laser uh, that... 
blows out of a backpack on a robot arm and will burn things that you're looking at automatically. Oh, and so, um, I can't say the guy's real name because he hasn't come out with it on the air. But it's a Greek dude, so you can imagine it's a very Greek-sounding name. And so, anyway, um, it's Stavros. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Stavros. Stavrakis, Papatakis. <laughs> It's like the most Ulos. fuckboy Greek name I could think of. <laughs> Spiros Papadakis. <laughs> Spiros is probably also a very fuckboy. <laughs> I, I definitely need to go. I need to connect with him because uh, I don't. If he's making gadgets, he needs magnets. Probably, yeah. Uh, I'll introduce Actually, you guys. Like, I don't give a shit. I, you know what I really what I want to do? I want to sponsor him. Yeah, I want to advertise to his uh, his people. If if any of y'all have any sort of influencer channel or uh, any, frankly suggestions, this guy uh, has half a million followers. Sponsor. He gets followed all the time. Um, I I'm happy to sponsor people. I, I'm looking for I, I look for YouTubers. I I carry. He gets it, pretty it, funny emails that are like, "Dear influencer." <laughs> I had a, an employee send a couple of those emails. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Just make the email sloppy. Don't spell check it. it if you want it, you want them to read and go like, oh, this is an actual person emailing me, not a copy paste. Yeah. So, copy pasta. Yeah. Uh, so, if if you know somebody, if you are somebody, let me know. I and and <laughs> any sort of intro would be great. Uh, apparently, when I send out emails, all of my emails go to spam because when Google sees. I would like to give you money and free stuff. They immediately spam your email. <laughs> so like I can't I cannot get through to influencers on my email anymore. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Text me. Uh when you tell me about that booze I need to buy on the way home. Yeah. And I will uh I'll just call them up and put you guys in conference. Sounds good. Well, Sweet. Thank you everybody. Let me know if you uh, y'all have any other suggestions for uh, making different games or uh, entertainment forms more accessible. Happy to adapted uh between myself and uh current fiance we are both very adept at uh at adapting different games for different what was the uh the email again that you gave that people could send stuff to? to to spam mail to hate mail me is wtf mate m-a-t-e 1337 <laughs> at yahoo.com <laughs> if you want to spam mail me if you want to hate mail me that's where you go uh, if, if you want to send me actual emails and, and you want to actually talk to me uh and, and not just like i, I don't know uh, in, in two to four months when I have a, a couple too many beers and I remember that I, I gave out this email. The at, the other email is info at themagnetbaron.com. Nice. Uh, all right. Contact form, we'll send it straight there. So, well, thanks all. Thanks all. Uh, thank yeah, you for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. If you stuck around this long, you should probably subscribe. Uh, so the link is right down there, I believe. Uh, click it, see more of these episodes. We try to get cool people like Constantine on talking about the stuff they're working on. Constantine, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Everybody, have a great day. And uh, yeah, uh, come back again soon.